I grew up in a house full of music, so I was just around it all the time. My dad uh, is, you know, in business now, but when he was in college, he played jazz trumpet, and he would play throughout the house. He would always sing. He would always fill the speakers with stuff, you know, old school stuff that he used to listen to, jazz music and soul music and stuff like that. My mom, uh, but she loved music as well, and she used to take us to lots of concerts. So I just, I was introduced to it at a young age, which was a great gift. Um, and then it was a combination of that and then kind of trying to find my voice in a way, combined with the fact that when I would listen to something, I, I could play it. You know, I, I could always, I realized early on I could play by ear. And so my parents had a piano in the house. And so after school, if I was having a real crap day or something, I'd go and sit down at the piano and I would just improvise. I would just, you know, just play stuff. And, um, and I didn't know where it came from. I didn't know why I knew where my fingers needed to go. Um, I just did. I had a need to express myself in a way that I wasn't able to at that, at that point. I mean, everybody has really horrible junior high experiences, but, um, you know, it, it was the combination of getting the bug, just enjoying how music made me feel, and then being able to use that as a form of communicating, and then being really intrigued and, and um, surprised in the best possible way at how that then made other people feel when I made myself the vessel for that. For I've been lonely in need of someone As though I'd done someone wrong somewhere But I don't know where I don't know where come lately It's a responsibility. There's, there's definitely the two sides of your brain are fighting against each other when you're doing it, especially when you're doing a concert. And so you're pacing backstage you may have done 500 shows. You might be getting kind of cynical about your own stuff and just kind of thinking, oh, do I have to do that again, you know, whatever. But you go out there and when you have a song that's right and a song that just touches you, it doesn't matter how many times you've done it. You hear those opening chords and you just, the creative side of your brain, the emotional side of your brain just jumps right back into needing to feel that and express that again. And then of course, you know, I became a real ham early on too, and you start to you start to see how it reaches other people, and it reminds you of when you're younger and 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 you're reached that way. When I would see, you know, I was lucky enough to grow up in Los Angeles, so, you know, I could see Elton John at the Hollywood Bowl. You know, I could go to the L.A. Phil and see concerts for kids. You know, and stuff like that. And I would sit there, and I would I would just get I would just get chills listening to the music, and I would say to myself, God, if I could make someone else feel the way I'm feeling right now, that would be just everything, everything to me. That was my dream. So when I get to, when I get to feel that every night on stage, um, I get a huge amount, a huge amount of pleasure playing music, but truly the reaction that I get, the way that, the way that music reaches my fans is, is, um, is the greatest reward. You know, when people come up to me, when people write letters and tell me a song's gotten them through a hard time or, um, that it's, it's inspired them to go into the arts or, or what have you, especially students, that's, that's great because it's that circle, you know, it's that cycle. And when you can be the one on the stage, not the one sitting there, um, you know, it's, it's a cool thing. Song she sang to me, song she rang to me, words that rang in me, rhymes that sprang for me, warm the night, and what was right. Both playing music and listening to music for me has been, uh, you know, a total escape and a total way of rebuilding and recharging my soul. It's probably the one thing in my life I couldn't live without. You know, it's it's um, it's something that has has meant so much to me, and it's meant a lot to me that it has meant so much to my fans and to people like that who've gotten something out of it. But I remember being thrown on the Grammy stage when I was 16 years old, plucked out of high school for a day to, to rehearse with David Foster and Celine Dion. And I was asked to sing this extraordinarily hard song in two languages, um, all because David had heard me sing somewhere. And he said, hey, hey kid, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm in math class. I'm like, all right, come and sing at this rehearsal. And I'm going, oh my god. And it was way too high for me. And it was all these things. But I got through it. And my dad was in the audience. He's videotaping. And like moments like that, especially if, your if my parents can be there to watch it. I'm really close with my family. And it's always so. Everything is always happening so fast for me and so anxiety-inducing for me that if I can kind of see it through their eyes and they, they slow it down for me a bit to enjoy it a little more, 
Those moments combined are, probably, are my favorite in the business. You are the sun, I am the moon. You are the words, I am the tune. Play me. You are the sun, I am the moon. You are the words, I am the tune. The Yamaha pianos I love because they seem to have blended the perfect happy medium of touch response, warmth, but you still need an edge to, that cuts through. And there's a, there's a sound and a style that is all Yamaha's that, um, that is for me the perfect studio piano, the perfect live piano because it's so responsive, you know, it can be that warm bath or it can or it can be the kind of thing that Elton John can be honky tonk man on you know and it's all the same I mean it's all Yamaha but it's the way it's the way the artist plays it and anytime you have an instrument that really kind of is there for you depending on how you want to reach people that particular song or that particular evening um, it's a great thing it becomes a part of you you know and so I, I've I like recording very, very old school. I just, I like getting with great arrangers. I like figuring out if there's gonna be French horns there. And then I like to record it in the room. And if you're gonna record something in the room, especially with that large a ship to steer, it takes preparation. You gotta make sure the song is absolutely arranged the way you want it. You gotta make sure it's the absolute right song for you, it's the right key, the arrangement is great, that you've practiced it enough that when you go in there you can make it a performance. So getting ready for my album recordings are kind of like getting ready for a tour. You know, I'm getting ready to go in and perform it and the mic happens to be on. And I also like to provide a little bit of eclecticism in the record. So, you know, finding those songs, we always start with a stack of kind of wish list songs. And kind of the first few weeks of recording, we just kind of sing through them with a the piano and just kind of see which ones feel great. Um, and then I write. I'm not, I'm not the fastest writer in the world, but, um, but I, I love writing. And I think that it's a way for me to bring to my world, and certainly to my genre, whatever it is, um, that personal touch.